Beloved brothers and sisters, welcome to the Shaw Fire Life Conference platform. This platform, our aim is to make simple the pathway to eternal life. And we have been uh, dwelling on the theme, the blessing set. And we dealt with five uh, aspects of the blessings. The last one we dealt with last Sunday was the blessing of sonship and daughterhood, if you want to put it that way. We made clear that through Jesus Christ, we have been given a new birth. We have been recreated. We are not just ordinary people. We are sons and daughters of God. And therefore, the sons and daughters of God must know how to live and succeed in this world. Hence, our theme for this month, God, our helper. We are going to take our text from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5b and 6. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? When the Lord Jehovah is our helper, man can do us nothing. So I want you to really echo after me. I say to you, man can do you nothing. Man can do me nothing. Man can do us nothing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, you need to come to this point where you know our God. The characteristic of our God as our helper. So as a son, as a daughter of God, when you know your God as your helper, which is what we are looking at here today, your operation in God will be different. Hallelujah. Your fears and your worries will go. Because you know that God is your helper. In 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 26 and 27, a king of Israel understood that help comes from God. And, so, and, and he declared that. If you know that story very well, there was a famine in that land because the land was besieged by the king of Syria. So in verse 26, a woman cried to the king. She saw the king in the midst of this famine, in the midst of hunger, in the midst of hardship. She cried to the king for help. And the king answered her, if the Lord Jehovah does not help you, where can I find help for you? Beloved brothers and sisters, I say to you, if God cannot help you, no one else can. But I thank God that our God is our helper. Our God can help. And he will help you and me today in the name of Jesus. So I want to emphasize to you again. If God cannot help you, no one else can. Our God will help us today in the name of Jesus. Amen. In whatever area you are experiencing famine. Famine of any form. Famine of health, famine of food, famine of lack of any form, or of siege of oppression. Our God will help you today and in this month of November and through the year 2020 in the name of Jesus. If God cannot help you, I say it again, no one else can. If there is a problem you have in life that God cannot help, hear me and hear me clearly. No one else can. Oh, I implore you, children of God, that you come to this place where you have resolved that our God, our helper, he is the one who will help me. He is the one who will help us. Because if there is any problem that you have that God cannot help, if there is any problem that you have that God cannot solve, there is no one else who can solve it. Of course, the reason is obvious. Our God Jehovah, he is the Lord of lords, he is the king of kings, he is the creator of all things. He is our maker. He is the creator of the sun, the moon, the stars. He is the maker, the creator of the universe. Therefore, if there is anything God cannot do, I tell you boldly and clearly, there is no one else who can do it. 
If God cannot help you, hear me, no one else can help you. Glory be to our God, who is our helper. Now let's look deeply into this topic, God our helper. The Hebrew, Hebrew names of God reveals the character of God. The Hebrew names of God reveals the character of God. Praise the name of the Lord. If you were going back to Exodus chapter 6, there you will see God declared to Moses that I reveal myself to your father, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as the almighty God. He said, but by my name, Jehovah, the Lord, they did not know me. You see, so how you know God is very important. So God revealed himself to Moses as the Lord, Jehovah. Why? Because it was time for God to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt, out of bondage. And when God introduced himself as Jehovah, the Lord, the Lord, he is saying, I don't need permission from any man. I don't even need your prayer to do what I am going to do. So he was telling Moses that he is going to come and visit them in the land of Egypt as Jehovah the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord of all flesh, the Lord to whom all kings must bow and subject themselves to. As it is written, the heart of the kings is in God's hand like rivers of water, and he turns it, it's like a river. He turns it to whichever direction he pleases. Hallelujah. And God said he was going to come with a strong hand because if he doesn't, without a strong hand, Pharaoh will not let the children of Israel go. And God came as he introduced himself. So it is very important as a son, as a daughter of God, as a child of God, that you know God, our helper, by his name. So in Hebrew, God, our helper, is El Izar. El Izar. E L E Z E R. This is, or this is a combination of two words. El, meaning God. Isa, meaning helper. Hallelujah. El Isa, God, my helper. Of course, you remember the name of one of uh, the sons of Aaron that was called El Leaza. El Leaza. So it was actually a form of El Isa, meaning God is my help. Now, when you know God, as your helper, brothers and sisters, fear and worry will come to an end. And you will begin to do exploit. Hallelujah. So let's look at a few examples very quickly. Hebrews chapter 13 that we read as the text, verse 6 B, uh, verse 5b and verse 6. Let's look at that text again. It says, for he himself has said, who is the he here? God himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we, you, may boldly say, the Lord Jehovah, my emphasis, is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? When you see God, Jehovah, as your helper, when you understand and you have come to this reality that Jehovah, God, is your helper. Again, I emphasize. You will fear no one and you will fear nothing because no one can do you nothing. No one can do you nothing. As that scripture says there, it says, what can man do to me? And we answer, what do you answer? Nothing. Answer it with me. Man can do me nothing. If God is my helper, man can do me nothing. Say it with me. If God is my helper, man can do me nothing. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's look very quickly at a few people who understood this key, this right, as a son, as a daughter of God, that God, our God, Jehovah, Elsa, is our helper. And what it means when God is your helper. Hallelujah. Let's start by looking at a man called Asa. Asa, Asa. Second Chronicles chapter 14, verses 9 through 14. Second Chronicles chapter 14, verses 9 through 14. Why I want us to look at the story of Asa, uh, because of time we'll rush through it, but I want us to look at verse 11. Because there Asa prayed a prayer that every one of us need to know how to pray that prayer. So, 
but I just tell us the story. Azza uh, he had 300,000 soldiers. And the king of Ethiopia, the Ethiopian, came with one million army against Azza. So Azza had to cry to God. In verse 11, I read, And Azza cried out to the Lord his God and said, Lord, it is nothing for you to help, whether with many or with those who have no power. Help us, O Lord our God, for we rest on you. And in your name, we go against this multitude. O Lord, you are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 12. So the Lord struck the Ethiopians before Asa and Judah, and the Ethiopians fled. 13. And Asa and the whole and the people who were with him pursued them to Jera. So the Ethiopians were overthrown and they could not recover, for they were broken before the Lord and his army, and they carried away very much spoil. Hallelujah. You can see here, Asa cried unto God. And this is one prayer you must learn how to pray. He said, God, when you come into the sin, it doesn't matter the number. You can use one and defeat a million. You can use a million and defeat whatever number. You do not help, Lord. It is, it is nothing for you to help, whether with many or with those who have no power. God, you help. You are our helper. And God struck the army of Ethiopia who came against Judah. Asa had victory. The Almighty God give you victory today in the name of Jesus. Jehovah Ezra manifests in your case, manifests in your family today in the name of Jesus. Let's go to the man that has enjoyed this blessing more than anybody else. Hallelujah. David. Oh, David understood the mystery of God, our helper. And David lived in this revelation. You remember that after David was anointed king, Saul persecuted David and wanted to kill David. Now it's like youth. A, a, a youth, because David was a youth, if you remember, and the king of a nation, the president of a nation, with all his armies pursuing a little child, I mean a youth, and to kill this youth. This was the case of David versus Saul, because at times people miss that appreciation. King Saul was the king of Israel, and David was just alone, a youth. But if you read the whole of 1 Samuel chapter 24, there you will see the story of the cave of Adullam. When Saul was told that David was hiding there, Saul went with his army, but God helped David. Instead of Saul capturing David, David and his captain were the ones who caught the clout of Saul. But David didn't kill Saul. If you go again, you would have wished that after David did that and showed Saul that God was with him, even Saul confessed with his own mouth that Saul would stop there. No, the enemy does not stop. That's why you must know your God. The Bible says, they that know their God shall be strong and do exploit. That's why we're taking this study. So you know who you are and that your God is your helper. Jehovah Ezra. El Ezra is with you. So in 1 Samuel chapter 26 again, you see Saul coming against David. And God gave Saul into David's hand again. He helped David. And as you know, this time David carried the spear and didn't kill Saul. We will come back to some of this point. So because there are things we must know. But there, when as uh, David uh, hey, was telling David, let me smite this man. David said, no, you have to abide by the word of God. Touch not my anointed. You cannot kill the anointed of the Lord. He said, God forbid that he should stretch his hands against the anointed of the Lord. He said, but leave him. Perhaps God will handle him. 
perhaps he will fall in war. So you must know how to hand over your enemy to your God, your helper. Hallelujah. We will come to that. So it is this David that has written so much about God's help that I want us to look at. So finally, in 1 Samuel chapter 31, verses 3 and 4, of course, you know there that Saul died in war. Just like David has said in 1 Samuel chapter 26, verses 8 to 10. 1 Samuel chapter 26, verses 8 to 10. Uh, time will fail us to read all that. But let's jump to Psalm 118, verses 5 to 14. So this David, whom God delivered from the president of a nation, of a whole nation, with all his armories, with all his armies, has learned something, has learned the secret of this our God, the helper. And that's what we why we are here looking at it, because God will help you. I say God will help you. God will help your family. Fear not. God, your helper, is with you. So in Psalm 118, if you are there, Psalm 118, I want us to read this one. Because as we are reading, we are actually decreeing and declaring things over our lives. And something is going to happen in the name of Jesus. Psalm 118 from verse 5. David wrote this. He said, I called the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Verse 7. The Lord is for me among those who help me. Hallelujah. Did you see that? Verse 7. The Lord is for me among those who help me. Therefore, I shall see my desire on those who hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations surrounded me. Can you see his testimony now? All nations surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They surrounded me. Yes, they surrounded me, but in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. They surrounded me like bees. Hallelujah. They were quenched like a fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord, I will destroy them. You pushed me violently that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord will help somebody this November. I said, the Lord will help you out of that situation. No matter what it is, remember, God, Jehovah is there. The Lord, your helper, is with you. He will help you. God will help you. Don't fear. Don't panic. God will help you. He will never come late. He will never come short. In the name of Jesus. Verse 14, which is our last reference. For the Lord is my strength, and he has become my salvation. The Lord will help you. The Lord is your salvation. Glory be to God. In Psalm 116 verse 6. Psalm 116 verse 6. You also see David declaring the help of the Lord. If you read from King James Version. He said, the Lord preserves the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. The Lord preserved the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. I declare and decree over your life and over my life that no matter where you are, God, your helper, God, our helper, will bring you out from that low state, from that low position. Just know that God, your helper, he is with you. Hallelujah. So that was the testimony of David. To crown it all, Let's look at Psalm 121, verses 1 to 8. I want you to open your scripture, your Bible on this one. So we read it together because this is our anchor scripture for this month. He said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from Jehovah who made heaven and earth. He will not allow my foot to be moved. I'm, I'm, I'm personalizing it now. So you personalize it for yourself. He will not allow my foot to be moved. He who keeps me will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. If you look at my uh, WhatsApp display, you probably would see there that I put there, my God does not sleep. I took it from this scripture. You have to come to this place where you know your God does not sleep. Hallelujah. I've seen him, I've seen him, I've seen him. I remember one, once uh, some bad boys picked me up 
when I was uh, in the east. Let me not mention the city. And they saw my ID card. They saw and they carried me. They even began to ask me, have our men picked you before? I said, no, your men have not picked me. I am a man of God. I have no business with your men. As we were going on the way, my car began to seize. The car just kept seizing. I didn't read the sign that God was helping me. We got to a military, uh, the front of a military barrack. The car seized there. I just didn't pick the sign. Oh, may God, may your spirit, the spirit of God, quicken you when God gives you a sign of his deliverance. But I trusted in God. I began to speak in tongues. And they got to a point and said, ah, let's go to the bank, get us some money. I said, no problem. And we got to the bank. Even when we got into the bank, somebody wanted to help. He just came, walked up to me and said, come, come, come. There's something wrong, come. But there were all sorts of confusion. Anyway, since it was money, I said, I just give them money, let them get out. Because they were with my car somewhere. I said, I get, the money, I get my car. I had no fear. I told the man who in the bank to say, no worry. Got them the money. And they took the money, entered my car. I drove them. And got to a place, they said, stop, stop us here, stop us here. As soon as they, they jumped out of my car and ran. But I said, oh God, this, the life of these ones you have captured. I saw the same man sometime and he was like a broomstick. And I used to pray for him. And I, I, every time I remember them, I would still pray that God will save their lives. But the point is, God defended me. They were calling people, trying to make arrangement, but God defended me. They jumped out of my car. God will defend you. Your enemies will become your friend in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, my God. I read from verse 4 again. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. 5. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. This is David. He understood. He understood what it meant to have God as your helper. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. Seven, the Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. And you can personalize that. The Lord shall preserve me from all evil. He shall preserve my soul. The Lord shall preserve my going out and my coming in. For how long? From this time forth and even forevermore. Praise be the name of the Lord. Because of time I will jump. There are other people I wanted us to refer to. In 2 Chronicles chapter 26 verse 15. You will see a man called Uziah. 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 U-Z-Z-I-A-H. There the Bible says that he was marvelously helped. Oh, he was marvelously helped till he became strong. The almighty God will help you. Jehovah Isa will help you till you attain, achieve, reach your goal, reach God's destiny for your life. Fear not. God is with you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Finally, let's look at the example of Paul. The example of Paul in Acts chapter 26. And you know Paul is one man, one child of God, that despite all that he went through, God helped him marvelously. God helped him marvelously. So in Acts chapter 26, Paul wrote there. He said he, he obtained help from God. If we look at 19 to 22. Acts chapter 26, 19 to 22. He said, therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus and in Jerusalem and throughout all the region of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent, turn to God and do works befitting repentance. For these reasons, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. 22. Therefore, having obtained help from God to this day I stand having obtained help from God to this day I stand you have obtained help from God and God will continue to help you to this day you stand and you will stand till the end of the life God has ordained for you here on earth nothing will move you the sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night in the name of Jesus he said to this day I stand witnessing both 
to small and great, saying no other things than those which the prophet and Moses said would come. That the Christ would suffer, that he would be the first to rise from the dead and would proclaim light to the Jewish people and to the Gentiles. That is the declaration, brothers and sisters, that through this Jesus Christ, we have become sons and daughters of God. And therefore, Jehovah is our God, our helper, is with us. We want to round off now. So, what are the key points that we should know to provoke the help of God? Number one, of course, you must come to Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. So you must come to Jesus Christ and become a son or a daughter of God. Number two, you must know that God is with you as a son or daughter of God. You must know this beyond all reasonable doubt that God is with you. That no matter what it looks like, God, your helper, is with you. Number three, you must confront every obstacle with boldness and declare God's help over it. Whatever obstacle is there, you must confront the obstacle. Don't keep your mouth shut. You are the one to confront. That's why I showed us the prayer of Asa. Read that prayer again in that verse 11 of 2 Chronicles chapter 14. Asa cried unto God, you are our help. So in this month of November, cry to God and say, God, my helper, help me. It does not take more teaching for you to say. Neither does it take few people, you say by your own might, by your own power, as you will. You can say with multitude, you can say with few. You are God, my helper. So declare, confront every obstacle with bonus and declare God's help over that matter, over that situation. Use the word of God. Use the word of God. As we have just gone through, like Psalm 121, as your backup, use the word of God as your backup, as you confront those obstacles in your life. Like Psalm 121. Those are the promises of God that God said, I will help you. Like Isaiah 41 verse 10, God said, I will hold your right, your right hand. I will help you. Number four, set high goals. Set high goals for yourself in this life. Because it's not only help against enemy that God can help you. God can help you in your business. God can help you in your career. God can help you in your marriage. God can help you in everywhere. That's why we say, if God cannot help you, if there is anything in this life that God cannot help you, then no one else can help you. So set high goals and ask God's help while you are working on those goals. Set high goals and present those goals before God and continue to work on it. And you shall achieve all those goals in this life in the name of Jesus. Number Five, I believe. Do not fear or worry, but rest on God. And then number six, which is the last point, let no pride be found in you. Let no pride. Because when God helps you, you will grow great, strong. You, you will achieve success. But please, let no pride be found in you. That man that I told you about, Uzziah, Uzziah in uh, Second Chronicles chapter 26, verse 15, whom God helped marvelously. When you go read that portion in verse uh, 16, something happened. Pride entered him because of how great he was. By the help of God, he became very great. Pride entered him. And uh, the story was not pleasant at all. So let no pride enter your heart, no matter how great God has lifted you. Let no pride be found in you. I want to close with this. There is a sister, I, 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 I trust God that one of these days she will be able to join us and give her testimony. Brethren, I'm not telling you theories, I'm telling you what people even in our generation have practiced and they have seen God's help. You can provoke the help of God. 
as a son, as a daughter of God, you have to be proactive. Just as I've told you this uh, six points, put it into practice. A sister I know very well. She understood when one cries to God, our helper, and is serious and committed to it that God hears. This sister observed that things used to just terminate in front of her. That is, they can be sharing something. If it comes in front of her, that's the time they will say, oh, that thing has finished. Ah! So she was pregnant and was, there was fuel scarcity and she went to the uh, petrol station. She came from office with uh, pregnancy. She went to petrol station and queued and queued and queued and queued. If I remember, she queued for like two hours or so. She said it was her turn and she came out of the car, opened the uh, tank for the attendant to fill her tank. Instead of attendant filling her tank, she heard that word again. He said, ah, Madam, sorry, we have closed. She pleaded, See, I'm pregnant. I came from office. I cannot come back. Please. They said, Madam, we have closed. Nothing. Ha! Ah! And then she remembered there is a God that is called Jehovah Isa that helped somebody. And she raised a cry to God. And she, she said, Oh God. Help me for the rest of my life. Let me never queue up for fuel. And God heard her. And she left. And managed to get home. From that day. And there was serious fuel scarcity in those days. She said it became so obvious that even her driver said, ah, Madam, I noticed that we don't lack fuel. And she smiled and said, God is the one helping us. She said, if she have a tank come slow, it could even show red. She would drive. As soon as it becomes critical, like once uh, that it happened to her, a, fuel, a petrol attendant, uh, petrol station attendant was on the road. As she just came, the place, they were opening, just opening. They were calling her and saying, Madam, come, come, come. We are selling fuel now. And she turned in and back. That's how it was happening for her. She didn't have to kill her driver. Because of that grace, her driver didn't have to kill nor lack for her during that whole scarcity. And it continued that way. If you will cry to our God and you know him as God, our helper, Jehovah is our God, will help you. So we're going to put this into practice. This is the exercise we will take as a round off and pray. Please. Study how God helped David, Hosea, and Paul, or any other character in the Bible. That's what I want you to spend this week doing. I've given all scriptures. Take those scriptures, read them again. Study how God helped them. And add Azar to that. Study how God helped David, Hosea, Paul, Azar, and any other character in the Bible that you choose to study. Give example how God helped them. And any lesson that you can take from it. One key lesson is you must, I want you to put down five areas, like the testimony of that sister, that you want the help of God to manifest in your life. As a son, as a daughter of God. Remember one of the actions I gave us to, for you to see the manifestation of God's help. One of the actions I gave us was that you should set high goals. And ask God to help you. Be very specific. Set a very high goal in this life. Like that sister prayed, cried to God, her helper. She said, in this life, oh God, let me never queue for fuel again. In the name of Jesus. And God help her. There are many testimonies. As we go along, we will take them. So please prepare. Next Sunday, we're going to do a study. All of us are going to be studying because, like I said, this platform is about us as children of God. Coming to know the blessing that God has provided for us and live in it. If a sister can uh, provoke the help of God over that situation of scarcity, she can provoke it in every other situation. And in this, she did provoke it. And she also shared a testimony of another woman who provoked the same help of God over her health. We will talk about that next time. Let's bring this to a close.
Remember now that the Holy Spirit of God has been given to us as our helper. The Holy Spirit has been given to us as our helper. And you see this in John chapter 14, verse 16 and verse 26. John chapter 14, verse 16 and verse 26. You must remember this, that if the people of old, as we have talked about, could provoke God's help, crying to God, you are actually carrying that God now with you. So God, our helper, is not in a far distance. He is always with you. Through the Holy Spirit that is with you, that is with me, that is with us. The Almighty God bless you. The Almighty God help you and your entire household. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this word that you have shared with us. Jehovah is a God, our helper. Anyone who has heard this word, Lord God, that has not come into Jesus Christ, Father, we pray by your mercy, please help him, help her. And I ask that you forgive their sin, their iniquities, transgressions, errors, mistakes, and let the blood of Jesus wash them and bring them into Christ. Pour your spirit upon them and make them sons and daughters of God. And now, Father, we join our voices together. I join my faith with my brothers and sisters, all who have connected here. And I ask God Almighty, whatever help this your children need today, whatever uh, 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 target they are going to set and ask your help, Father, help them. In this month of November, manifest unto us all as Jehovah is a God, our help. You are the Ebenezer, our rock of help. Thank you, our God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Jehovah Isa, God, your helper. God, my helper, help you and help me and help our families and help us all in Jesus' name. Amen.